Hi everyone, today we're going to be crocheting this purse and the strap for this purse can be adjusted to any length. So this can be a clutch like I have, or you could make it long like a traditional purse. And for this, I recommend using some scrap yarn. So I am using some leftover Lion Brand Yarns Re-Up Recycled Cotton and Polyester Blend Yarn in the full moon color. But you can mix and match this however you would like. I will say if you're working with acrylic yarn, it will be softer, which you might not want in a clutch. So I do recommend using a sturdier yarn like cotton. And for this, you're going to be working with two strands at once, so you at least need two different balls of yarn to work this. And for the main body of the purse, we're going to be working with a size K or 10 and a half crochet hook. And for the actual straps, I recommend a smaller crochet hook, like a size F or three and three quarters of a millimeter, or a size G, which is four and a quarter of a millimeter. So go ahead and grab your two strands of yarn and we are going to be working these simultaneously for this entire portion of our purse. And you're also going to grab your size K or 10 and a half crochet hook. We're going to begin with a magic circle. And we want to chain one and then we're going to place six single crochets inside of our magic circle. And once you have your six single crochets, go ahead and pull on your tail to tighten the gap in your magic circle. From here, grab a scrap piece of yarn or a stitch marker, or you can just use a safety pin. This is one that came with a shirt I bought, so you can just grab whatever you have lying on hand. And what we're going to do is we're going to mark the first stitch in every row. And what this is going to allow us to do is create a spiral pattern. So we won't have to worry about starting and stopping each individual row. Instead, they're just going to build on top of each other like a spiral. So for our big circle to create our purse, we are going to be working with slip stitches. And you might not be familiar with increasing slip stitches, so I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. All you're going to do is place a slip stitch in the back loop as well as the front loop for an increase. So for this next row, we are going to place an increasing slip stitch in all six of our stitches. And I want you to practice keeping these slip stitches really, really loose because you're going to be working in them. So we're going to begin first by placing a slip stitch in our back loop only of our first single crochet right here. We're just going to place a loose slip stitch. Then in that same stitch in the front loop only, we're going to place another slip stitch. So that will create two slip stitches for this stitch. Before we continue on with our pattern, I want you to go ahead and mark the first stitch that you created. And from here, we're going to repeat that increasing slip stitch pattern going all the way around our row by placing one slip stitch in the back loop and then one slip stitch in the front loop. And again, you want to keep these nice and loose. And your row is over when you've made it back around to your stitch marker. So you can go ahead and remove it when you're there. And the pattern for this next row is we're going to place one slip stitch in our front loop only. And then we're going to place one increasing slip stitch. And we're going to repeat that alternating pattern going all the way around our row. So diving into the front loop only on that first stitch and then in the back loop as well as the front loop for our second stitch. And don't forget to mark that first stitch of your row. And when you get to the end of your row, you should have a total of 18 slip stitches. And again, when you get to the end of your row, you can go ahead and remove your stitch marker. 
And the pattern for our next row is to place one slip stitch in the front loop only of our first two stitches. And then we're going to place that increasing slip stitch in our third stitch. And don't forget to mark that first stitch. And we're going to repeat this pattern going around our row for a total of 24 slip stitches. And the pattern for our next row is to place one slip stitch in the front loop only of our first three stitches. And then we're going to place that increasing slip stitch in our fourth stitch. And we're just going to repeat that going around our row for a total of 30 slip stitches. And the pattern for our next row is to place one slip stitch in the front loop only of our first four stitches. And then we want to place that increasing slip stitch stitch in our fifth. And we just want to repeat that going around our row. And at the end of the row, we should have a total of 36 slip stitches. And for our next row, we're going to place one slip stitch in the front loop only of our first five stitches. And then we want to place that increasing slip stitch in our sixth. And you're going to repeat that going around your row for a total of 42 slip stitches. And the pattern for our next row is to place one slip stitch in the front loop only of our first six stitches. And then we're going to place that increasing slip stitch in our seventh. And we're going to repeat that going around our row for a total of 48 slip stitches. And for our next row, we're going to place one slip stitch in the front loop only of our first seven stitches. And then we're going to place that increasing slip stitch in our eighth. And we're going to repeat that going around our row for a total of 54 slip stitches. And for our next row, we're going to place one slip stitch in the front loop only of our first eight stitches, and then that increasing slip stitch in our ninth. And we're going to repeat that going around our row for a total of 60 slip stitches. And for our next row, we're going to place one slip stitch in the front loop only of our first nine stitches. And then we're going to place that increasing slip stitch in our 10th. And we're going to repeat that going around our row for a total of 66 slip stitches. And I do recommend sort of flattening out your pattern in between rows, and that will help with this folding up. And for our next row, we're going to place one slip stitch in the front loop only of our first 10 stitches. And then we're going to place that increasing slip stitch in our 11th. And we're going to repeat that going around our row for a total of 72 slip stitches. And for our next row, we're going to place one slip stitch in the front loop only of our first 11 stitches. And then we're going to place that increasing slip stitch in our 12th. And we're going to repeat that going around our row for a total of 78 slip stitches. And the pattern for our next row is to place one slip stitch in the front loop only of our first 12 stitches and then to place that increasing slip stitch in our 13th. And we're going to repeat that going around our row for a total of 84 slip stitches. And for our next row, we're going to place one slip stitch in the front loop only of our first 13 stitches. And then we're going to place that increasing slip stitch in our 14th. And we're going to repeat that going around our row for a total of 90 slip stitches. And when you get to the end of your row, your circle should look something like this. So from here, we're going to cut and tie off our yarn.
And from here, I want you to repeat those steps, starting over and creating another circle just like this. Once you have your second circle, what I want you to do is make sure that you've pulled your tails to whichever side you want facing in on your purse. And then we're going to line up the two ending tails. So now if you look, you want your pretty side facing out. And we're going to join the two sides of our purse while we crochet our strap. So for this next part, you will need your smaller crochet hook and only one strand of yarn. And we're going to attach that yarn to our crochet hook using a slip knot. So from here, I want you to insert your crochet hook in the stitch to the left of your ending tail here. And we're going to place one single crochet there. Then we're going to chain five. And then from here, I want you to place two single crochets in the stitch to the left of that ending tail there on this other side of your purse. Then we're going to turn our work and we want to make sure that we don't accidentally flip any of the sides of our purse when we make this turn because we want the good sides to still be facing out. From here, we're going to skip these first two stitches, which were our single crochet stitches. And then we're going to place one slip stitch in the back loop only of our next five stitches. And if this first chain that you're working in is a little bit weird and twisted, that's okay because we did have to twist this a little bit wonky to get this first row in place. And once you get to the end of your row, you should have one stitch remaining. We're going to go ahead and skip that remaining stitch and place a single crochet back in that same stitch where we've already worked. And then we're going to add an additional single crochet in our next stitch over. From here, we're going to turn our work again. From here, we're going to skip these first two stitches and then we're going to place one slip stitch in the front loop only in our next five stitches. So in the last row, we were working in the back loop only, but in this row, we're going to be working in the front loop only. And you shouldn't have any leftover stitches when you get to the end of your row here. From here, we want to place two single crochets in our next stitch over. So make sure you're not accidentally working toward your ending tail on this one. We're working away from it. So we're going to place our two single crochets here. And again, we want to turn our work. So now our project looks like this. We have the pretty sides facing out on both sides, and we're starting to create a band between them. For this row, we're going to skip our first two stitches, and we want to place one slip stitch in the back loop only of each stitch remaining in our row, which should be five stitches. And for this side, we're going to add an additional single crochet to the same stitch that we already worked before. And then we want to add a single crochet in our next stitch. Again, we want to turn our work. And we want to skip these first two stitches again and then place one slip stitch in the front loop only of the five stitches remaining in our row.
And when you get to the end of this row, you're going to place two single crochets in your next stitch over. And from here, we are going to repeat those last two rows over and over until we get to the opposite side of our circle. So we're going to just repeat this pattern until we've joined the two sides of our purse all the way to this point on the opposite edge here. And when you've made it to this halfway point on the other side of your purse, your purse and strap should look something like this. So for our next row, we're going to skip these first two stitches just like we've been doing, and then we're going to continue on with where we were in our pattern. So for me, I'm working in these back loops only. And we're going to place our slip stitches in these five stitches just like we've been doing. And once you've placed your slip stitches, we won't be joining with our purse from this point on. So we're just going to chain one and then turn our work. And so from here, we're going to skip that turning chain and then you're going to continue on with your pattern for these next five stitches. So for me, I worked in the back loop only in the last row. So for this row, I'm going to be working in the front loop only. And once you get to the end of your row, then you're just going to chain one and turn your work. So from here, we're just going to continue with our alternating pattern of placing a row of slip stitches in the back loop only, and then a row of slip stitches in the front loop only. And each row should have five slip stitches, and you should use the chain one as your turning chain. So you're just going to follow this pattern until you get your strap to your desired length. And I repeated those two rows for a total of 50 rows because I'm just making a little clutch bag. But of course, you can add as many rows as you would like. So once you've gotten your strap to your desired length, we need to join it back up with our purse. And so what I mean by that is we're going to join this strap end on this other side where our next point is. So we left off right here at our current point. So now we want to join back at our next set of points over here. So the first thing I want you to do is make sure you don't have any twists in your strap here. And then whichever side your crochet hook is on, that's the side that you're going to start with to crochet these together. So for me, I'm going to begin on the point on this back side. So you can see here that there is a sort of natural point where our stitches look a little different from each other. So we're just going to insert our crochet hook right there and we're going to place one single crochet. Now we're going to turn our work. Again, just give that strap a quick check, making sure there's no twists in it. And from here, we're going to skip that single crochet stitch right here, and we're going to continue on with our alternating pattern in our remaining stitches. So I worked in the back loop only in my last row. So for this row, I'm going to place my slip stitches in the front loop only for those five main stitches of our strap. Again, skipping that single crochet stitch. And once you've worked all along your row, then we need to join with our other side of our purse. So again, you just sort of want to visually locate your point and you're going to insert your crochet hook in that stitch of your point. So you're creating an opening and you're going to place two single crochets there. From here, we're going to turn our work this way. So now again, we want to skip those two single crochets and then work the opposite stitch from your previous row. So for me, that's placing slip stitches in the back loops only for the five stitches of this row.
And once you've worked your five slip stitches, then you're going to add a single crochet in that last stitch where you've already worked and in the following stitch over. And again, you're going to turn your work and you're going to skip your first two stitches and then work the opposite stitch from your previous row, which for me is slip stitches in the front loop only. So from here, you're just repeating these two rows, just like you did on your way working up to your strap. We're just joining this strap to our project here. And we're going to repeat those two rows over and over until we work back down to the first row of this pattern. So once you've worked your way back down to this first row where we started out working our strap and connecting our purse, then what we need to do is go ahead and turn this inside out. But I did want to highlight one thing before we do that. If you get to this point and you don't have the same number of stitches left, it's not a big deal. You don't need to redo this pattern or anything. Just go ahead and make some small corrections. So what I mean by that is maybe if this was your side with extra stitches, then you could go ahead and maybe space out your two single crochets, taking up two stitches rather than one. That won't be a big deal for your pattern. So I'm leaving off with one stitch on both sides to work in. So what we're going to do next is we're going to turn our purse inside out for a second. So go ahead and make sure when you've turned this inside out that you've also pulled your loop through as well as your working yarn. And it's going to be pulling up through the inside of this hole and that's not a big deal at all for right now. So from here, we're going to go ahead and place our two single crochets in our next stitch over sort of beside our loop, just like we were doing before. So from here, we are going to join these two short edges of our strap together. So to do that, we're going to skip our two single crochet stitches that we just placed, just like we've been doing all along. And then we're going to insert our crochet hook up underneath the full slip stitch on our current row. So just the full stitch there. And then working in this first row over here, we're going to insert our crochet hook in that front loop only. So you only have the front loop for these stitches. So once you've captured both sides of your strap, you're going to yarn over and pull through all the loops on your crochet hook for a slip stitch. So from here, we're just going to repeat this process in the four remaining stitches of our strap for a total of five joining slip stitches. And once you're done joining your two sides of your strap, then all we need to do is place two single crochet stitches in the remaining stitch on this other side. So right here. And once you've placed your two single crochets, then we're going to cut and tie off our yarn. And while your purse is inside out, I recommend hiding all of your tails somewhere on the inside of the purse. And for this last part of our purse, we are going to create a border for the edge of our purse that connects to our strap. And we're going to begin by attaching the yarn to our crochet hook using a slip knot. And it doesn't matter which side you start with, but go ahead and pick up your purse and in this right hand corner where your strap connects to your purse, you want to insert your crochet hook in that last stitch there. So on the edge of your point. And we're going to place a single crochet in that stitch. And from here, we want to place one single crochet in each of the stitches that line our purse right here. So we're just going to work single crochet stitches until we get to our strap on the other side. And 
And when you make it back to this other side, again, we want to place one single crochet in this stitch where we've already worked to join our strap. From here, I want you to turn your work toward your strap. And so we're going to be placing single crochet stitches along the edge of our strap here. And so since we don't have traditional stitches to work in, we are going to be working in these available loops along the edge. And we want to try to space these single crochet stitches out as evenly as possible. So for each ridge, I want to have one to two single crochets. So I usually try to work in the top of the ridge and that available loop there, and then the one in between. And that will give me my two single crochets for each ridge. If for some reason the stitch at the top of the ridge is really tight like this one, then I usually just skip it. It's not a big deal. It doesn't have to be exact or perfect. So you want to crochet this border going all the way down your strap. And when you make it back down to the other side of your strap, then you're simply going to place a slip stitch in your first single crochet from this portion. From here, we're going to cut and tie off our yarn. And you can hide this tail on the inside of your purse. And from here, we just want to repeat these steps on the other side of our purse exactly. So we're going to start right here in this corner and just work all the way around our strap and then slip stitch back into that corner stitch. And once you're done working around your other side and hiding your tails, then your purse should look something like this. Please let me know in the comments below if you experienced any issues while you were making this, and I will do my best to help you out. If this video helped you, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel for more crochet patterns and tutorials. Thank you so much for working with me, and I hope you have a wonderful, awesome day.